Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. Today we've got a little how to zero your air rifle. Most people will have a preferred zeroing distance because it's most likely to be the distance they're going to encounter quarry on a regular basis. I generally shoot 25 meters to zero my rifles before actually testing different ballistic capabilities and testing different click values at different ranges. It's fundamental to have a good backstop and make sure the position of the rifle is as stable as possible with whatever accessories you've got available to you. Soft bags and soft supports are better than hard supports, but generally speaking, if you have to only use a hard support, support your hand holding the rifle rather than the rifle itself on a hard surface. Start close up to the target and use a target large enough you can clearly see the pellet striking. I would always shoot groups rather than single shots. This allows you to eradicate bad shots or ones badly affected by crosswinds. A first focal plane scope is one where as you zoom up, the reticle appears to get larger along with the target, but this means the reticle stays in exact proportion with the target, meaning that the hash marks on the reticle give you accurate dialing capability, which will match your turrets, whether it's in minutes of angle or milliradians. The reticle should be matched the same. Second focal plane scopes are one where the reticle remains constant in size regardless of magnification setting. These require a specific magnification setting to correspond with any corrective dial clicks but the centre of the reticle is always the centre of the reticle and for now I'd always work in using the centre of it. It's imperative to try and practice perfect trigger control and keep the rifle as stable as possible. Not all scopes have adjustable parallax control for different ranges. If you're struggling to get clear sight picture in focus at shorter ranges, reduce the magnification on your optic. Most scopes will indicate which way the direction of travel will move the point of impact on target. Each click will be a specified value at a specified range, but it's sometimes easier to work in the angular measurement. Here, this scope is in milliradian, so each click is 10 millimeters at 100 meters, which means each click is five millimeters at 50 meters, or two and a half millimeters at 25 meters. The windage is exactly the same. Most clicks are calibrated at 100 yards or 100 metres in either quarter or half minutes of angle, which is approximately quarter or a half inch at 100 yards. Or if they're a milliradian scope, clicks are usually 10 millimetres at 100 metres. Now these don't specifically matter, but what you need to remember is if you halve those distances, you need to double the number of clicks to make the same correction. For example, if you were shooting at 50 yards and you wanted to move the point of impact one inch with quarter inch clicks, you'd actually need to use double the amount because you're at half the distance. So if you're at 25 yards, which is a quarter of 100 yards, you then need to multiply the number of clicks you need by four for the same correction distance. A lot of people now prefer to work in angular measurements like minutes of angle or milliradians, especially when these correspond with first focal plane reticles, which clearly indicate exact aim off and dial off values regardless of the magnification setting. It may be a slightly iterative process to zero the rifle and you may need to use a few targets and generally gradually dial in to get the correct position of impact on target at your chosen range. Once this is done, you can set your turrets up to indicate the known zero range according to the instruction manual.
I would always recommend using targets large enough that you can clearly see them. Don't pick a target so small the reticle almost covers it. Make sure you can quarter the target or hold central between concentric rings, for example. Using the crosshair on a larger circle usually gives you unnerving capability to find the middle of it without thinking or trying too hard and focusing your image. Use the most comfortable magnification to get a crisp, clear sight picture. Also, make sure the eyepiece is focused so that the reticle is crisp in your field of view. Once zeroed, try the pellets. You'll notice they have different points of impact, and maybe different speeds due to the weight and different ballistics due to the ballistic coefficient of the pellet and the speed it's travelling at. So the curvature of your trajectory is again different and you need to experiment, take notes and learn. If the turrets aren't removable and resettable, you can often just put a white mark on the dial itself underneath the cap. This always means you've got a baseline to work from if you're changing distances without getting lost. Once the rifle is zeroed and you've set up your turrets or even a zero stop according to the manufacturer's instructions, place targets at different ranges and experiment with the ballistic curve of your projectile and see where it hits high and where it hits low depending on the distance and make notes of everything. These can be extremely helpful in the long term and great when hunting because quarry is never at a specified range. So knowing the curve of your trajectory to dial or aim off to strike the quarry where you want it to is imperative to safe, effective hunting. If you're very new to rifle shooting, you may find that your groups will get better as you continue through this process. Once you've zeroed the rifle, follow the instructions in the manual for resetting the turrets to mark your correct zero range. Different scopes will have different procedures, so follow the instruction book. Some scopes may also have a zero stop facility, which means you can't get lost below a certain point. 